you have to have the stomach for it. Be making beer is awesome. That's the easy part. Yeah. Running a business, I still don't got it figured out. We're opening our third location and I'm just like, huh? But if I could give someone advice, like it, um, you know, follow your dreams, you know, because um, the goal of this thing was not to make uh, money, really. <laughs> it wasn't. Awesome. So welcome to another segment of the Faces of Syracuse. Uh, today we have the pleasure of sitting down with Mr. Timothy Shore of the Barrett Acorns Brewing Company. Uh, I believe we have a really good segment here today. Excited to get into it. So with that being said, uh, we can jump into the very first question. So Tim, of course you grew up in Syracuse, um, had access to breweries such as Genesee and Saranac. Uh, give us some information about how the local beer scene in central New York, also Dogfish down in Delaware, kind of inspired you to do what you're doing today. Uh, yeah, so overall, uh, my my first exposures to, to craft was, you know, G Genesee and Saranac. And, uh, moved out to uh, Rehoboth, Delaware, and um, was experiencing Dogfish Head there. Then I was actually in Chicago uh, for o over 10 years, and uh, that's when I really got into the beer scene and, and started working at little brew pubs and stuff like that. I actually uh, was given a homebrew kit, really, okay. and uh, started doing it at home and just went down the rabbit hole and just got really inspired by, you know, doing that. Prior to this, I, I was a musician traveling around. That's kind of how I ended up in a whole bunch of different towns and uh, was really into just creative, you know, art. It was my favorite kind of thing. So the creative side of making beer was, was really, really um, great. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it was a couple, a couple of, uh, of things. And, and one, I, I was, uh, I really wanted to raise my family here. Uh, I have a lot of family here, whereas my wife, Crystal, does not really have a lot of uh, uh, family there because they had all kind of, they had all moved away from Chicago. And so, yeah, then I ended up here and, you know, we, we saw it as an opportunity because there wasn't um, a really um, a lot of breweries yet. Now there's a ton, but um, there wasn't quite a lot of breweries yet. So we were like, oh, it's kind of an open space for it. Now let's let's jump into a little bit some of the specifics here on, on, on your menu. So, of course, there's, there's plenty of drinks. I'm, I'm looking at them all here with uh, some pretty unique names. You know, you have um, Brett the Hitman Tart and you also have a thousand tiny Michael Jackson break dancing in your mouth. Yeah. Now, <laughs> naming a drink, is there a process behind that is it something that you might see give us some insight on how you go about naming some of the things here yeah so with bretonomyces the hitman tart uh bretonomyces is one of the yeast that we use in fermentation of that <clears throat> that specific beer mm -hmm. and uh, i was looking for a name and i kind of kicked it out to a bunch of my friends like i'm looking for a name for this bretonomyces beer and then uh my friend timmy ferguson had said hey what about bretonomyces the hitman tart like yeah. and i was like all right that's cool so that was just uh, a friend of mine, a patron. Yeah. Um, has he's, he's helped me name a couple beers. Um, uh, then also I kick it out to like our, our bartenders and stuff. Like, hey, what do you guys think? You know, like some of our, our different staff members and um, some of the artists that we work with. So it just kind of um, develops kind of um, kind of naturally, you know. Like, yeah. just what do you guys think we should call this? You know, we do come up with a ton of brands. You know, we have well over a hundred now. So it's. Um, it, it, I can't come up with all the ideas, you know. Uh, one of the most recent events that we did, uh, the Canwood Derby, was um, inspired by one of our patrons had said, hey, what do you think about this Canwood Derby? I saw this place out in California or Seattle, something like that, did it because he was out there visiting. And he's like, we did it, you know, so this was in like 2019. He'd come up with the idea and then we're like, all right, cool, we'll do it, we'll do it next spring. Um, and then pandemic happened, right? So we didn't do it for you know two years. It just got put on the back burner. Um, and then uh, we were finally able to. My wife was able to organize it and get it going. Um, but um, you know th those ideas that basically the same as the names. You know they just kind of come from like our, our community. Beer community is real tight. You know real people are. You know they, they come here and then for, they forever come here. For, so um, you have to have the stomach for it. Um, because craft be, making beer is awesome. That's the easy part. Yeah. Running a business, I still don't got it figured out. We're opening our third location, and I'm just like, huh? I don't know how to do any of this. I really don't. 
Uh, my wife recently come on last November to uh, to help you know with the business side of things because I'm great at making beer. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I come up with cool ideas. That's it. <laughs> you know. Um, business thing is it's a monster man it's, it's so complex and it's so expensive it's uh the the budget and everything just blown out like just it's but if i could give someone advice like it um you know follow your dreams you know because um the goal of this thing was not to make uh, money really <laughs> it wasn't it was to have like a uh you know happiness and like a lifestyle that like my wife and I could come and go as we please almost you know I mean obviously we have responsibilities but you know with a family you know if I got to go nine to five and she's got to go nine to five now our kids are in daycare and what you know it's just it, we weren't really keen on that structure and and now that we are um, to the point where we're opening our third location sure there's a lot more work but you know we've got a great team you know like and and uh, we're able to uh, manage our lives a, a lot better um, and uh, it really is uh, about that, that more than anything, you know. Uh, yeah. I want people to feel like they're a part of it because, I mean, I always knew the beer community was like, you know, super like tight and like people like that, like your product, they're like, they come and they, they, you know, patronize and they do, you know, they, they, they you know, becomes a part of their life, you know. I think that is how I want people to feel. And, and when, I, when we opened this place, it was kind of caught off guard by how people actually um, like, like, de like just dedicate three days a week to just come here and hang out. And, they embraced it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and even further moving into, we got some customers coming here, but, uh, but either way, that's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, moving even further into that, like when, when, you know, the country was faced with the tragedy of like, you know, COVID, like we had to shut down, like we're going into spring and we got to shut down. And in the spring, in March, when we shut down, I got 10,000 gallons of beer. I'm ready to move out into all the bars and like, we're ready to roll. It's a lot of freaking beer. But we sold it all because everybody just ordered online come and pick up curbside. We did deliveries for like, I think I did deliveries for like a hundred something days straight. Basically the whole time, the entire time we weren't allowed to be open even outside or inside. Um, my kids being homeschooled, myself driving, they're in the back and I'm helping them with their homework as I'm delivering beer all around town. And, and like we had two guys delivering and it was really like, I was without words about like how, like that part, portion of community. Hi. Come on in. We're doing a little interview. You want to be in it? Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, right now, is this your very first time here? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. So, but if it were, um, I'd say buy the Ukraine beer. Um, yeah, we a little bit about that. Yeah. So, uh, we, we did a little collabor collaboration with uh, a whole bunch of breweries in there. Basically, every single brewery in Central New York um, kind of got together and uh, brewed a beer at Myers Creek. Um, they have probably, you know, they have the biggest facility in the area and uh, made a gigantic batch of this beer. Uh, it's a Golden Strong Ale. It's the Dry Hop Golden Strong. Super delicious. It's like eight and a half percent or eight, eight, eight or so percent. I don't have the stats on it, but it's a, so it's a strong beer. Um, and uh, uh, we did it to, to, to raise money and send it, send it uh, to Ukraine for some, you know, relief effort. And um, I believe we, we raised about $40,000 making it. So uh, it was like, that's what I would tell people to buy today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we're not going to have it for long. Um, we're, it, we're releasing it today. One of the things about brewery community, and in this community specifically, and, and, and even back in Chicago, is everybody is very into tithing. You know, everybody gives back to the community because the community is so, so good to us, you know. That's kind of like, it's, there's always charity, you know. Absolutely. I'd never say no to charity. <laughs> That's great. My, my my wife, who's the business manager, sometimes gives me a kick, but, but <laughs> yeah, I always I send it, whatever. Give them what they want, you know. No, that's uh, great. That's great. That's very good to know. Well, well, Tim, with that, you know, I'd say we really appreciate you taking the time with us. And, for sure. And learning a little bit more about your story. It's really good to hear. Um, you know, and for those watching, you know, we hope you enjoyed learning about Tim's story as much as we did. Um, if you have any suggestions for nominees on future segments, uh, please head over to thefacesofsyracuse.com and check out the segments that we've already done, who are the prominent faces in Syracuse.